wide receiver the Saints have. He, he definitely, you know, can run every route on the route tree. But I believe it's a lot easier, especially for Sean Payton. I mean, we're talking about a guy who, you know, Marcus Coast is seventh round pick. You know, uh, uh, you're looking at guys like Lance Moore, undrafted free agent. I mean, he makes wide receivers come out of nowhere. It's not as if old man Ben Watson was, you know, was one of the greatest tight ends we'd ever seen. No, he was always a pretty decent guy. Drew Brees made him look like he had turned back the, you know, you know, turned back the hands of time, and all of a sudden he was a great tight end again. I mean, Jimmy Graham was a nobody. I mean, how many times did you hear? It was almost a drinking game at one point. Jimmy Graham used to play basketball. I mean, at one point, that's <laughs> all you heard. But it was yeah. the idea that Sean Payton and Drew Brees had taken this guy that pretty much was an awful basketball player. I'm not sure if you ever saw him play basketball. Jimmy was garbage. So he took, they, they took this garbage basketball player and made him a star at tight end. Widely considered, along with Rob Gronkowski, to be the best tight end in football. So it's not like, you know, we're talking about you know, some guy who was already, you know, already there. No, Drew Brees has made wide receivers. If you look at Willie Sneed, there's a reason why people compare him to Lance, uh, Lance Moore. It's because he came out of nowhere. Brandon Coleman is the fourth wide receiver, and he could possibly have four or five touchdowns at the end of the season. Who's even thinking about Brandon Coleman? There are fans that act like Brandon Coleman is a first-round draft bust. And, you know, he's your fourth wide receiver, and he may, he may catch four or five TDs this season. It's amazing to think of what Drew Brees and Sean Payton do for, you know, for a wide receiver. So that's why I can mm-hmm. sit down and say it may be a lot easier for the Saints to get rid of Brandon Cooks then it would be for them to get rid of Teron Armstead or somebody like that. Heck, I don't even think they I – in mean, running back, it could be another position that they would just find undrafted guys and just plug them in and go. But it's not like you want to replace Mark Ingram. He's productive. You just got to kind of, you know, you take the good with the bad. But unfortunately for Cooks, he stirred up – he basically just went and kicked over an Paul and decided that he was going to stand there with his foot right there. Well, eventually, yeah, the answer is going to start to bite and it's going to hurt. Well, uh, let's say this, because I think everybody who's listening tonight, if they weren't on the side, they would have decided by now. And I also say because we're a little bit past what our schedule time is, we can run over and it's not too big of a deal. But it, it's a little bit past and everybody would have made up their mind already based on our arguments. So let's just move on. Sunday, Arizona, what's it take to win? What's your prediction? Where the Saints gonna have a chance to win? All right, I guess I'll answer it. Do they have? A <laughs> they have. A, they have a Lloyd. They have a Lloyd Christmas chance. But I, I don't believe the Saints are gonna go into Arizona and win that game. I, I, I put it out there on Twitter earlier today. I need Carson Palmer to remember that he's Carson Palmer. But unfortunately, I think what's gonna happen is he's gonna believe he's the second coming of Joe Montana, and that's what, that's the Carson Palmer we're gonna see in in, on, uh, in Arizona on Sunday. That's just the way it goes for this thing's team. Are they capable of winning in Arizona? Yes, I just don't know if they can. Remember last week's message was, you can't lose to the Lions fight. But that's what happened. The Saints came out flat versus the Lions, and then they came out flat versus the Bucks. I don't know if there's enough energy left in the building to say you're going to go on a road to Arizona, a team that definitely, you know, is kind of, you know, in the same position as the Saints. They don't want to go down, you know, and just say we're just going to lose and just, you know, say we suck. No, Arizona has a very prideful defense, and they have an offense that at any point they can score points. They have one of the best running backs in football right now. So they have a recipe to win. I don't know what same team I'm going to get. I know what same defense mm-hmm. I'm going to get. I don't know what same team I'm going to get. So my take is, until the Saints prove me otherwise, I'll give them the second game against Tampa. You I have think been they'll muted. Win that one. To unmute yourself, they'll, they'll, press the star key twice. Atlanta. I wouldn't be surprised, but I think they lose this game against Arizona, and I'm going to say the score is going to be uh, 31-27, Arizona. Hmm. What about you, Kyle and Patrick, since y'all are here with us? Mm-hmm. I'll go first. Uh, David Johnson scares me. <laughs> you know that, and he's, you know, I, I have a nightmare. It's going back to the first Atlanta game. Those running backs did to us, but much improved defense. But uh, this is just going to be uh, this going to be a tough on the road against this, against this defense and offense. The last couple of games has not had to show me anything at all. You know, I, I don't know what their problem is, but uh, I'm gonna say 24 to 17 
Arizona. All right, all right. Well, here here's me on it, man. I, I'm my prediction last week got destroyed because I said the Saints would win the next two games and get your hopes up, and then they would just fundamentally collapse and lose the last two against Tampa and Atlanta. So that's obviously not going to happen. I'm kind of with um, Brian here. I don't know what team I'm going to get. I mean, the, this Saints team is just too unpredictable. Now, I don't see us allowing 27 points or 31 points by Arizona. So if the Saints lose, I think we're going to lose like 24 to 17. You know, something like that. If we win, then we win like 27-24. This defense has just been too consistent lately, and, man, it, it shocks me to, to say that, to be able to say that, but it's true. The defense has been too consistent for me to see them as falling apart. The opposite is true offensively. We go and dominate a top-five defense in the NFL and then fall flat against two defenses that are mediocre, you know, at best, especially one of them who is, I think, ranked in the 20s, in the 20s somewhere, low 20s. I mean, nowhere near Los Angeles Rams. So I don't know pardon who me, we're going to get. Mean, pardon me, I don't mean to interrupt you, but when I say that 31-27 score, it's not because I believe the Saints defense is going to allow 31 points. Let's not forget the Saints offense has been giving away, you know, scores. Oh, oh so you, you want me to have to say Drew Brees is going to throw some pick sixes. I, I've had enough interceptions for two weeks. I don't want to see any more. I'm done with interceptions. That's it. Quick it's fan, all Brad, you're allowed. Quick fan. Quick fan. Yeah, yeah, quicksand. That's a great movie, by the way. If y'all haven't seen The Replacements, came out probably a decade ago. I, I love that Keanu Reeves guy. He's awesome. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like I said, man, I, I no idea what offense I'm going to get. If we get, you know, Drew Brees come out, score the first drive, get a little momentum, Hightower and Ingram get 100 yards, eh, we might win. But I, I just I don't know. I say the Saints are going to lose just because I don't think the Saints are the better team right now. One part being momentum, other part just being inconsistency. So, yeah. What What about uh, anybody else want 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 to chime in here? I think Kyle's already Kyle muted himself. Okay. It got a little too hostile in here for him. <laughs> uh, that's all right. I, I, I'll I'll get with Kyle later, and I just talk bad about him behind his back and blame it all on you. <laughs> <laughs> all right well um it, it's been an eventful night you know um usually i'm the one with the most supporters so it's been different for me but it, it all worked out in the end and after everything we're still friends you might not be friends with other people that we've had on the show but i hope you still like me of course you're my brother and i'm just gonna talk <laughs> bad about you to Kyle. <laughs> oh my goodness well it's been a great week. Patrick, definitely thank you for coming on the show. Uh, Sean, Kyle, all the listeners that we've had this evening, Brian, of course, my co-host. I want you two to uh, throw out where people can find you, where they can follow you, where they can see your stuff, and we're going to wrap it up for the night. Okay, uh, yeah, you can catch me at uh, whodatwarriors.com, and uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, a whodat. Uh, for myself, first of all, let me say this. If you guys don't follow Patrick, do yourselves a favor and go do it. The guy is really insightful. He has great takes. And uh, he can get a little sarcasm off as well. So please make sure you follow him. He's, he's a good, he's really, really good follow. For myself, you can find me at Brian TNR. That's B-R-Y-A-N-T-N-R. I am a proven athlete and a four-time Connect Four champion. Do not challenge me on Twitter. <laughs> and if you're looking for something a little more wholesome, a little more family friendly, come check out Rev Deuce Wyndham on Twitter. That's my handle. And you can see my articles and my interviews and me just running my mouth on Canal Street Chronicles. Uh, I also want to give a, a special shout out to Saints News and Kyle T. Mosley for allowing us to have our show. Check them out. They've got shows all during the week. And finally, I said a prayer for him at the end of the show. But just to remind you guys, if you didn't hear it and, you know, going forward, say a prayer for Scott Alexander um, for some things he's going through health wise. Make sure you keep him in your prayers tonight and going forward. Uh, he's a friend of the show. A lot of us have had interactions with him and he, he's definitely a benefit to, you know, sports media, not just Saints media, sports media in general. So keep that in your prayers. Uh, 
thanks everybody i mean it's been an interesting night i'll say that uh i love having y'all on here we'll see you next tuesday after hopefully a saints win against the arizona cardinals 7 p.m to 9 p.m ish y'all have a great night who that and god bless call recording off the organizer has ended this uber conference goodbye